Hi and welcome to Belgian Diecast Restorations. I'm Johan and just days after the premiere of my 40th video, my channel turned one year old this week. So I think it's a perfect occasion for a special code 3 restoration. On one side we have the Matchbox 71C Ford Heavy Rack Truck with SO livery and on the other side we have the 13D Dodge Rack Truck with BP livery. Both are well-known models that could be found in a lot of toy boxes of the 60s and 70s. The 71C Ford is based on an N700 truck. The Dodge is based on a D500 truck. When I did the same Ford rack truck earlier this year, I noticed a lot of similarities with the 13D Dodge rack truck. So the idea was born to swap the models around and give the Ford truck the BP livery and the Dodge truck the SO livery. So let's get out the tools and get to work. With a build like this with two very similar models, it's important to keep the parts separate, especially the wheels and axles. First, I take apart the yellow and green Dodge rack truck. This model is held by two rivets. I drill them out and with some persuasion the model comes apart. Inside the cap I find the red beacon which had been pushed inside. We have the window unit which will need some glue and the red tow hook. This is removed by pushing the hook upwards. Since the plastic is fairly old and worn this can get a bit fiddly. Next I drill out the one rivet holding the Ford rack truck together. Inside we have the window unit with the molded beacon and also the same red tow hook. Lesney reused a lot of parts on different models. This hook for example can be found on quite a lot of trucks and cranes in the Matchbox range from the 60s and 70s. And although the hook is often missing it's easy to find spares. Next I remove the wheels of the Dodge by grinding away the axle ends. Then I do the same with the Ford truck. These are the parts you don't want to mix. The front axle of the Dodge is smaller than the rear axle. The Ford truck has larger wheels and all the axles are of the same length. That both trucks are very similar is proven by putting the rear ends side by side. They match up perfectly. This also means that the decals for these trucks are interchangeable without any problems. With both models disassembled it's time to strip the paint. Matchbox paints are stubborn and when the metal parts return from the caustic soda they still have a lot of paint on them. I remove every fleck of paint using various wire brushes, then I polish the parts to prepare them for painting. I drill a 1.5mm pilot hole in all the rivet posts and tap a 2mm screw thread to close up the models later. The cap of the Ford and the rear end of the Dodge will be painted in yellow and white respectively, so they are primed in white. The 
the cap of the Dodge and the rear end of the Ford will be painted in red and green respectively and receive a coat of grey primer. The cap of the Ford Wrecker is then sprayed to in sulfur yellow. That's the same bright yellow I used for the cap of the BP tanker and is a very close match to the original BP yellow. The cap of the Dodge truck is sprayed in flame red, which is a bit lighter than the ruby red I used on the restoration of the Ford Wreck truck, but closer to the original color. The rear end of the Dodge is sprayed in Motip High Gloss White. The rear end and front grille of the Ford is airbrushed in the green height leftover of the BP tanker. Since we are doing a custom paint job and not a real restoration, I take the liberty to do some detailing. I looked at a lot of Dodge trucks and most of them had a white front bumper and grille. This is pretty tricky as the details are very tiny. I use a Molotov Signal white acrylic marker for the bumper and the front grille, but I have to turn to toothpicks for the two wings above the headlights. The rest of the detailing is done off camera as I needed my full concentration for this. The headlights and the indicator lights are picked out with malt of chrome. The indicator lights then get a dab of Tamiya clear orange. American tow trucks of that period had all red tail lights. I first give them a mirror base with malt of chrome, then I color them with Tamiya clear red. I saw some four trucks with a chrome front bumper and a brushed aluminum front grille, and that's what I will do for this truck. The bumper is chromed with malt of chrome. The front grille is painted with Tomia metallic silver. Then the headlights are also picked out with malt of chrome to bring them out of the dollar silver paint. I used to have problems with the yellow toner in my laser printed decals bleeding out when I applied acrylic clear coats. But I don't have that problem with the polyurethane clear I'm currently using, so for the first time I will be applying the decals before the clear coat in order to protect them along with the paint job. I already had the decals ready for both trucks, in fact I used the SO decals on the Ford restoration earlier this year and since the sides of both tow trucks are virtually identical, the decals will fit regardless. First the Ford truck receives the BP logo. Since this has to be applied on a dark surface, it was printed on white decal paper. Then the Dodge truck received the ESO logo. Since this has to be applied on a white background, it has been printed on clear decal paper.
And finally all the metal parts are clear coated with Vallejo polyurethane varnish. This is the red beacon that was inside the Dutch truck. It's good that it wasn't lost, but the red beacon on the red cap won't stand out. That's probably why Leslie chose a green window and beacon for the Ford truck. I have these yellow beacons from Gemini model cars in France. They can be bought on a sprue of 10 in the web shop. I'll leave a link in the description. These beacons are slightly flatter, but the same size. The windscreen of the Dutch truck is not too bad, apart from the slab that has broken off when the beacon was pushed in. I polish the windscreen and notice that a tiny crack is spreading towards the top. I glue the slab in place with super glue. This should also seal the crack and prevent it from spreading any further. The condition of the fourth windscreen is also not too bad, apart from a round bruise in the upper corner. Probably the result of an impact with something pointy. Nevertheless, I have to reuse it as I don't have any spare windows for that model. I give it a good polish, then I sand the bruised beacon with 1200 grit and 2000 grit sandpaper and polish it until it's shiny again. The wheels are worn and I refresh them with heavily tinted Tamiya X1 gloss black. The axles are polished with the wire brush to bring back their former shine. And finally the hooks are straightened off camera with my soldering heat gun set at the lowest temperature. One of the hooks is bruised from years of play and I go over it with Mr. Hobby Gloss Red. The paint job has cured and all the parts are cleaned and polished. So let's see how our tow trucks turned out. First come the wheels. I put the wheels back on the axles and since the wheels are receded in the wheel wells I use a bolt in which I drilled a small indentation to support the axle. That way I don't damage the paint when I hammer a new mushroom head on the axle ends. Nevertheless I have to be careful that I don't miss and hit the body.
Since the new yellow beacon doesn't have a rim to prevent it from falling out, I glue it to the window unit. Then I drop in the window piece and close up the model. Finally I attach the hook, this just clicks in place when pushed down. Next I reassemble the Ford truck with its new yellow and green BP livery. No need to replace the beacon here as it stands out enough on the yellow cap. It actually looks pretty good in combination with the new yellow and green livery. And finally we can close up the model and attach the tow hook. One year and 40 videos calls for a special code 3 restoration. This number 13D and 71C rack trucks in their well-known SOMBP livery were very play-worn and in need of a refresh. So I took the opportunity to swap the livery on both models. And here is the result. The SO Ford Heavy Rack Truck now carries the BP livery and the BP Dodge Wrecker now carries the SO livery and sports a brand new yellow beacon. The added detailing was worth the trouble, although not perfect it really makes the truck stand out. Sadly I could not remove the blemish on the Ford windscreen and the crack on top of the Dodge windscreen is slightly visible, but sometimes we have to work with what we have. Thanks for watching, if you enjoy my videos you are in for a whole new year of diecast restorations, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tick that notification bell. More restorations are coming up. See you in the next video.